I've talked a fair bit about horror content on my channel, especially recently, and without a doubt, one subgenre that I've really wanted to revisit is meta horror. For those of you who don't know, meta horror or fourth wall breaking horror is basically when horror, in this case a game, interacts or acknowledges the real world in some way. Whether it's reading your name from your computer or sending someone to your house to spray you with wasp killer, there's a wide variety of things that meta horror is capable of. When you think about meta horror, I'm sure some popular examples immediately come to mind, such as I'm Scared, the pixelated first person horror game with a scary white man chasing you. Or Doki Doki Literature Club, the visual novel about scary women chasing you. I've talked about this a bit more in depth in my video about another fourth wall breaking game called Cattleboy, which holy sh**, you guys seem to like that one. Anyways, what I'm getting at is that although not the most popular genre in the world, meta horror has definitely had a large impact on the horror world. But have you ever stopped to think, when did it truly begin? Well, you could always just take the easy route and say something like Eternal Darkness or even that one part in Metal Gear Solid where Psycho Mantis reads your memory card, but I'm talking about a game that's much more overlooked than those. In fact, I didn't even know about it until recently. A game that was cited as direct inspiration for Doki Doki Literature Club by the creator. We're talking about the game Irisu Syndrome. Now, I'm normally the person who just knows the dumbest, most obscure video games. I'm sure my girlfriend can attest that I've talked about the Red Baron Pizza video game multiple times. However, when I first heard of a Risu Syndrome from a comment on my video, I had zero clue what it was referring to. Huge shout out to Dimitri's Junkyard for bringing this to my attention, as it immediately fascinated me. I found a download for the game plus an English patch on archive.org and I got to work playing it. The link will be in the description if you want to play and I I recommend that you do. So sit back, relax, and let me tell you about a game where an anime girl walks across your desktop. This is Irisu Syndrome. So when you first extract this game, you might want to take a look at the files unlike I did. In there, you find the usual data files, but there's also this picture of what seems to be three normal teenagers. We'll be revisiting this image and the folder very soon. When you boot up the game, you're greeted with a very simple title screen. There's a start button, a ranking of your best scores, and an album for all the art you see throughout the game. There's also this girl on the left with this uh, witch bunny hybrid outfit, who's also only wearing one sock, and I didn't notice this at all, but my girlfriend immediately pointed it out. This is Irisu, the main character of the game, and we'll get into that later. Also, a quick side tangent, the music is fantastic in this game. Like, unironically, it is criminal that this soundtrack has not been more widely known. It captures the emotion of this game and its story perfectly, and although it would loop for a while during the game, I never grew tired of it. It's absolutely beautiful for being in a horror game, and it is a damn shame that I cannot play any of it during this video, since I did a bit of research and it has been copyright claimed in the past, so please go check this out on your own time, I'll be linking it in the description. A huge Shout out to the composer Takiyaki Watanabe, fantastic job, I want to buy you a burger or something. Anyways, let's actually talk about the gameplay, and honestly, it's pretty solid. This is a puzzle game, and it's a little confusing to understand at first, at least it was for me. You've got this little box area where various shapes fall down. There's three colors at first, but more are introduced as you get into the game. The goal is to combine blocks of the same color together to get points. The more colored blocks that connect, the more points you'll get. You could do this by using either a slow block or a fast block to shoot at the falling shapes, which after being hit, will become solid and fall like normal. There's various different ways to connect the blocks. You can hit two or more blocks together before they hit the ground, you can hit a block on the ground with one from the air, or you can occasionally hit this little glowing ball with a block to get rid of that color on the entire board. You've also got a health bar, which will fill up when you connect more blocks. It also starts at basically nothing, so if you started this game like me and had no damn clue what you were doing, you'll most likely die very fast. Anyways, it's kind of tricky to learn at first, but it is easy to master. I went from getting like 100 points to 20,000 in a few rounds. And that's really all there is to the gameplay aspect. I think it's fun. It's a standard puzzle formula, but with really fun physics and simple yet addicting gameplay. The goal is very straightforward, last as long as possible, and don't make the anime girl fade into existence. 
Oh, right, that's a thing. You may have noticed that Irisu, the girl from the menu, is in the background of the game the entire time, and this is when the fourth wall breaking aspect of the game starts to poke its head out a little bit. Whenever you lose, she slowly fades in front of your whole game with a disappointed look on your face. It's no worries though, this happens Stop to me going. all the time when I'm at home. The background also has some silly drawings of cats, however, the cats might be getting a bit too silly as they appear to be being killed in various ways. Surely, it's not foreshadowing for anything, <laughs> right? Now, while the gameplay is good, what makes this game what it is, is the story. Now, with my very limited brain power and the internet, I was able to piece together stories as best as I could. Now, it's no FNAF when it comes to its lore, but there's just as much death involved. Don't you worry. The story consists of these little cutscenes that will play after you lose in the game. Remember that picture from earlier? Well, these are the three characters that are going to be involved in the story. Edogawa, Yuji, and Agiha. Irisu is oddly not present in this photo, and also for any of these cutscenes. The first cutscene shows us the three sitting at a beach, having some banter about what to eat for dinner. This seems pretty normal, however, if you get up to some file checking shenanigans, you can see that new text files have been added to the folder. The first one, a request, just says that it's day one and everyone's getting along. Pretty ominous, but not as ominous as the file Curtains Rise, where it gives a movie concept of a murder incident featuring the characters from the game? Weirdly, Agaha isn't mentioned here, but Irisu is. Anyways, these files are very early indicators that something just isn't right. The next level you die in has a new cutscene at the end, with the three telling ghost stories. However, when Edagawa is telling his ghost story, he seems to describe a witch with bunny ears and an apron dress that he saw. Sounds awfully familiar. Anyways, they think he's trolling, forget about the whole situation, and a new file is added to the folder titled To Edo. It describes instructions to make up a ghost story and incorporate what someone talked about into the the story. There seems to be this theme of some sort of play or scripted event going on here, judging by the previous files, but nothing's been made concrete just yet. Level 3, same deal, you die, you get a cutscene. This time, Ageha and Yuji are eating, and it seems as if Edagawa went missing. I'm sure it's fine though, nothing to worry about. Except that the picture from earlier changed? Pfft, that man is dead dead. No new text file this time, but it's pretty obvious at this point that the whole murder incident referenced earlier could hold some relevance right now. Level 4's cutscenes consist of the two characters looking for Adagawa when Yuji decides to go off on his own. The text file added after this is called To Yuji, and it's similar to the previous one, which appears to be instructions for Yuji to disappear after pretending to look for Adagawa. Oh, also, while I was playing through this part of the game, I tabbed out for a bit and I saw this sh** on my screen, and as soon as I tabbed back in, it just disappeared. Zero clue what that was, but it definitely got me hooked. The fifth level is different, even before you get to the cutscene. When you lose this time, Irisu is crying. There's no clear reason why this is, but let me tell you, I was not expecting it. The cutscene is pretty straightforward, as Agaha sits down and wonders where everyone went. This time, the text file is just titled Irisu, and it contains nothing. Now, playing after this and losing again leaves you with what seems to be a flashing TV with a news report on it. The news report describes missing university students and eventually the murder of Edagawa. It then abruptly cuts to the end and the photo now shows everybody crossed out. That was truly a great story. I'm so glad that I played through the entirety of this game and experienced- <laughs> This is a meta horror game, dumbass. You think there's not an alternate ending? Now, the ending you just saw was the bad ending, where it's implied heavily that the three were murdered by Arisu. However, that doesn't explain the cryptic messages we got in the folder and the almost script-like text we saw. Now, the reason I got the bad ending was because I sucked ass, but if you don't suck ass and manage to score over 20,000 points within the story, which resets every six levels, you get what's considered the good ending. And for you meta horror fans out there, buckle up. At the end of the sixth level, instead of the news report from last time, you're met with Agaha speaking to someone, saying that they're the only two left. Agaha enters a cabin and stumbles across various notes, which are identical to the ones found in the files. Confused and enraged, it's revealed that the person she was talking to was actually Irisu, who was with them the entire time. She begins to berate and question Arisu about what she found, and Arisu says nothing in return. However, one of the coolest moments in the game occurs when Arisu starts to walk across your screen into the game window, holding a bloody bat with nails in it. Agaha is clueless to this as she continues to rant more and more as Arisu closes in and swings at Agaha, with terrifying art displayed as she does the action. This crashes the game, leaving the player in complete awe. 
It's then revealed that it was all just a trick and it was just a birthday surprise. Turns out the reason for the notes that seemed to script out all the events happening was to plan a surprise party for Agaha. They basically just baited her into thinking all of her friends went missing and that she was about to die. A crazy way to run a surprise party, but I mean, it seemed to work, I guess. The game comes to an end and you're met with one last text file called Agaha. It's a diary entry from Agaha reading about how she wasn't really a fan of how they did the surprise party, and it turns out that Yuji was drawing suicidal cats the whole time, kind of like the background of the puzzle game part. It's alright though, because once she saw this, she told him to switch to bunnies, and she doesn't like bunnies. And that was a Risu syndrome. I think I did miss one easter egg that required a score of 100,000 before you do certain things in the game, but I just straight up didn't get it, so here's the image that pops up. Very creepy and scary indeed. However, while that's the end of a Risu syndrome, the base version, there's a little more to this game. After beating everything, if you click on the bottom right of the screen, you're met with a new cutscene describing a story from a while ago. This story was about a rabbit and a girl, and it ties into the new game Game, Irisu Syndrome Metsu. You thought it was over? No, 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 no. We're only at the halfway point. We're just getting started, baby! Now, Metsu isn't completely different from the regular game, but it's way different enough to warrant an entire segment about it. Metsu is essentially a hard mode of sorts, even though it's really not that much harder, but I do like the new gameplay a lot. The physics and basics of how to score points are the same, however, this time, all the falling blocks are squares, and you've got these bubble-shaped blocks coming up from the bottom, which you're able to chain together before getting the points for one of the bubbles to get even more. The time before a block is considered dead and you lose health is also increased, more colors are introduced, and like I had just mentioned, the difficulty is ramped up a bit. Also, Arisu no longer looks at you after a game is over, she just kinda stares off into the distance. This is definitely the thing I played the most with this game. I probably sat for a few hours just playing this, with my highest score being 163,000 points. I am an absolute beast. Anyways, I know what you're wondering, where does the story come into play here? Well, every time you score well enough, you get a new scrap of paper, each one expanding about a story of a girl and a rabbit, as mentioned earlier. The story is told through the eyes of a boy, about how when he was in elementary school, there was two animals who were kept at the schoolyard, a cat who was pretty well liked and given plenty of attention, and a rabbit who was neglected and in poor health. He sees the rabbit frequently, and eventually, he sees a girl doing the same. The girl is always alone, having the rabbit keep her company, and she supposedly hates the cats that the other students love, possibly because of allergies. He never approaches this girl, but takes a liking to her. Eventually, the rabbit is attacked and killed by a wild dog, leaving a bloody stain in the cage where it used to be. The girl eventually stops showing up to school, and it's implied that the boy may have either witnessed or been responsible for the death of the rabbit. After the base story's over, you get another file, titled Suicidal Rabbit Diary. Now, this note is way too long to just read, but I'll try to sum up the important parts. It's revealed that the boy in the story that we follow is Yuji, and the girl is Arisu. It turns out that Yuji knew about the entire plan that Arisu had to murder everybody on the trip through reading her notebook, and that Yuji didn't really care about the outcome. In fact, it's revealed that he may have even wanted her to kill him, as seen when he switches from drawing dead cats to rabbits because he knows she'll look through his notebook. This diary gives a lot of substance to the relationships between Arisu and the others, even revealing that she wanted to kill Agaha because she liked Yuji. I'd recommend you give it a read yourself. The last bit of story you can get is if you manage to get over 100,000 points in Metsu. You get this very subtle easter egg where you load into a game, and the title screen displays text for a split second. The text gives more background to the Metsu cutscenes, explaining that Arisu became friends with the rabbit because she could relate to it, and that she was the one who discovered the rabbit's severed head in the cage. And that was the entirety of the meta horror game Arisu Syndrome. I did miss a few secrets, such as the cough medicine file, which had Arisu explaining her intent to kill the others and her reasoning behind it, and the ending cutscene where the group takes a picture together, but I swear it is not my fault. I'm like 90% sure I met those requirements and I just got scammed out of these secrets. I am absolutely astonished that this game is not more well known to the public. Hell, I'm surprised that I didn't know about this, considering this shit is right up my alley. The fact that this was essentially
essentially a founding father for meta horror games and barely anybody talks about it is criminal. The puzzle gameplay was unique and interesting, keeping me interested while I was waiting for the story to continue. The story itself is great, starting off super simple with a basic plot of three friends going missing on a trip and expanding it through various secret messages and endings hidden throughout the game. And of course the music, oh my god. God, the music. I wish I wasn't too scared to play it, but please go listen to it. I am begging you. While not too scary, Arisu Syndrome does fourth wall breaking perfectly. It knows when to use its scary aspects correctly and doesn't abuse them. I'll admit that that one random ass jump scare did get me. Also, while it has been done a million times since this game's release, this game was one of the first to utilize notes in the game folder, so it really can't be judged for that. I really hope that one day this game gets the surge in popularity that it deserves. But not a single one of you will beat my Metsu Mode high score. That shit's going on my resume.